The chemical bonds between the individual atoms in molecules can be thought of as springs. These springs can absorb the energy from light, which will cause them to move. By measuring what light gets absorbed by the sample, we can infer what functional groups make up the sample. However, you need to combine IR spectroscopy with other techniques such as NMR spectroscopy or mass spectrometry to gain the full picture. The resulting infrared spectrum looks like this. The transmittance, i.e. the percentage of light that passes through the sample is displayed on the y-axis. The weigh number, i.e. 1 divided by the wavelength of the light in centimeters, is displayed on the x-axis. Each dip, also referred to as a peak in the spectrum, corresponds to a wave number at which light has been absorbed by the sample molecule as the light has not reached the detector, which in turn causes this dip in the spectrum. The region between 600 and 1400 is called the fingerprint region and tends to be complex with multiple bands that overlap each other. Above this region is where one can manually identify the presence of most functional groups. To do this, we need to use a correlation table. I've included a super basic one here, so let's use that for our first practice problem. Here we can see an example of an IR spectrum. First thing we need to do is to cross out the fingerprint region. This will make our lives easier because it won't confuse us. Next, we can look at where we find dips, or in other words, peaks. The first peak is located around the 3000 mark. If we check that location from our correlation table, we observe that this corresponds to a CH group. This is immediately followed by a broad dip between 3200 to 3600, but more precisely I'd say 3400 to 3600, around there. If we again look from the correlation table, this will correspond to an alcohol group. Now, these two pieces of information alone will not be enough to determine what molecule this is. But if we combine IR spectroscopy with NMR spectroscopy, we can determine the functional groups and the carbon skeleton. And suddenly, determining the type of molecule we are dealing with becomes much easier. Now, if you want to practice how to interpret IR spectra with more examples, check out this video.